your business together. Get yourself into what you do and see it through. Because being boss is hard. Blending work and life is messy. Making a dream job of your own isn't easy. But getting paid for it, becoming known for it, and finding purpose in it is so doable if you do the work. Being Boss, a podcast for creative entrepreneurs from Emily Thompson and Kathleen Shannon. Welcome to episode number 27 with our special guest, Val Geisler. This episode is brought to you by FreshBooks Cloud Accounting. All right, you all, this podcast has been a long time coming. It's time to talk all things productivity and organization. So today we're jamming on getting organized and getting systems in place for your business with our guest, Val Geisler. Now, Val is a self-described chronic organizer who is on a mission to help other creative entrepreneurs get organized so that you can spend less time feeling scattered and more time doing whatever it is that you do best. She's also going to be touching on client-facing systems to help you improve customer experience, which probably leads to a bigger paycheck. So Val, hello. Hey, so happy to be here, you guys. Oh, glad to have you. We're so glad to have you on. Val and I have a connection through, we both have a little baby. So Fox is 16 months. And how old is your baby, Val? 13 months, Eleanor. 13 She's months. 13 months, yeah. And so, so kind of through like the creative entrepreneur crew and then being boss in the Facebook group, you've been really active in our Facebook group and helping all the bosses there kind of giving them tips and advice on how to get organized. So we wanted to bring you on the show so that you can tell all of our listeners how to get their stuff together. It's so cool to be here because I remember reading your blog, Kathleen, and like, I was like, I need to know what the heck to wear when I'm a pregnant lady. And (laughs) you had that series, right? You had that, um, like what you were wearing. And I was like, yeah, I need some personal style and have it integrate with being pregnant. And I, I totally dug at the end, like that, those last few weeks when you were like, it's like leggings guys. I'm wearing my workout clothes every day. Oh yeah. And And I was like, yes. Thank you. Yeah, yoga pants so, are all that fit at some point. Right. <laughs> so it's nice to be able to like kind of come full circle from that life and then have that whole life changing experience for both of us. And, and watching you and a few other people that were like a little, a couple months ahead of me gave me a little preview of what was to come. And I think like I had a lot of the same ideas about not only like having a kid and how I wanted to raise them and, and, and then how that never really works out the way you want it to. And, and the same for business too. Like you talk a lot about that on and Kathleen and, um, and on the braid blog. So yeah. I, you know, as a long time reader and, um, and follower like Instagram and all that jazz, it's kind of nice to be able to come together now and chat about how all of those business parts and pieces come together and, and sometimes are like you can systemize and make plans and you can create structure. And then you also have to add in room for, for flow. hundred percent. Totally. Yeah. Amen. We got it in early, early this time. I know. I made a point to get that one in really early. <laughs> There's a drinking game in the group now, you know. I know. We, so we were recording our episode yesterday with Lisa Congdon. So that will be episode 26. Um, and at the end of it, I, I think Kathleen actually says amen. And then it becomes a funny conversation where I learned that there's a drinking game because I was previously unaware. And so now I will be working (laughs) it a lot to get all of our bosses really trashed. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And when we go to new Orleans, can you do a lot of amens for the live episode? So we can all, Oh my and we need like a box drink. Okay. We need to have like shots lined up and just get everyone trashed. (laughs) With our yes. amens and our mm-hmms. There we go. We, we Let's need a do New it. Orleans theme boss a drink for the podcast taping. <gasps> yes. All right. Yeah, so well, and this is a good time to talk about our New Orleans trip. Yeah. Right. I'm exactly. going. Who's going? Everyone. I'm going. going. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah, in October we are uh, we're joining or 
getting joined by a whole bunch of Being Boss listeners to head to New Orleans and just have a weekend of hanging out and um, but also doing some ball stuff. There's going to be a master class, um, a live podcast recording. We're going to do um, a ghost tour. A, a ghost tour. There's a cocktail meet and greet and a like a community dinner. It's going to be a ton of fun. So and I haven't mentioned this yet, but if my brother is in town, I'm going to try and get him to do a private performance, which yeah. sounds like makes him sound like a stripper. <laughs> Perfect. But my brother is a sideshow. Now <laughs> my brother is a sideshow performer, and so he swallows fire. No, he swallows swords. He breathes fire. He hammers <laughs> nails into his head, but he's a really amazing sideshow performer. And so um, I'm going to try and get him to do a performance for us if he's in town, if he's not on tour. So that would be an extra special treat. But you can find out more about it's or about our trip to New Orleans and our vacation there and how you can join us at lovebeingboss.com slash NOLA. The trip's really cool because I just came back from a conference and uh, and it was so amazing to be face to face. I mean, there's Skype, which is lovely, but like actual human contact face to face with other people who think the way you do and who run businesses the way you do. Because quite honestly, like my husband is a nurse and he loves being a nurse and he has no interest in ever being an entrepreneur, running his own business. And, um, and you know, it's different than like, like David being able to support your business, Emily, and like being a part of, you know, indie shopography and everything that you do. And just Greg has no interest in that. And so in my like internal circle and even my close friends, it's hard to find that connection. And so being, um, in real life with people is so valuable. And the things that came out of three days of spending time with people who, you know, believe what I believe and think the way I do and can build businesses together. It's amazing. You know, courses that people are creating together and masterminds that have come together out of it. And just that real connection that you get from like IRL time. Agree. Amen. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the whole that's the whole like impetus for the trip. So yeah. I would just say if you haven't, if you've been on the fence about coming to the trip for anyone who's listening, if you're on the fence about it, take the dive and, you know, come and put yourself out there. There are people looking for roommates in the, there's a little group. And so just, you know, extend yourself and know that there's people like there's shy people there. There's, you know, extroverted people there. Um, I'll be the introvert who like needs some alone time and the weekend's totally built for that, which is beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's why we built it. I think, well, Kathleen and I first met at a conference. And so like everything that we have now is really stemmed from the relationship we were building beforehand, but then actually meeting and realize that we're real people. Um, and then doing this, this trip, the way we did it, we didn't want to do, we didn't want to do a conference with lots of round tables and like, and, Things. We wanted it to be something where people could go like have a vacation and enjoy themselves because we all work our butts off all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah, I love, amen. Amen. I love networking <laughs> in a bikini. Yes. 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 I want to like hang out with people by a pool and I want to wander streets and just like hang out with people. New Orleans is one of my favorite cities. So if I can like walk around with a couple people who's never been in one of my favorite places and show them some of my favorite like nooks and grannies. Like that's how I want to spend my time with really amazing people who think the way I think. Um, because it is a really rare thing. Like I live in a town where there are like four of us <laughs> or something. So like being able to be around people who get you is so huge. And that's why we built the trip. Kathleen and I are stoked. We've been planning this literally for like, what, five years now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're like, less. we're going either way on vacation together. We might as well invite yeah. a whole bunch of other bosses. Yeah. Okay. But back to you, Val. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about your job and what you do for a living? Sure. So I work with digital entrepreneurs to improve their customer experience through systems and processes that really streamline everything from inside of their business, the way that they interact with their own business, and then the way people who experience them, their clients and customers, um, and even just community, like tribe that you're building around you, um, how they experience your business. And it all ties back into systems. And that's what's really beautiful about it. Like 
there's this whole, um, I don't know if you've heard or people say sometimes like systems are sexy. The Wait, I've never systems, heard that. I've yeah, never. I mean, <laughs> systems are not like people say that and like, th- that's great for the people that feel that way, that systems are sexy. I don't, I don't think they're sexy. I think that they are functional and that the, I'd say the only sexy thing about them is that they really like give your give you the ultimate experience of running your business so that you can focus on your people. That's what's sexy about them. There's nothing sexy about like a, either a spreadsheet or a checklist. There just isn't. But the, what's sexy is that they, they allow you to, to know that you're doing everything the, the way you want to be doing it so that you can focus on what actually matters. Because we all start businesses to like pursue our passion and to share our dream with the world, not to, I've heard you say this on like some of the fresh books moments as like, we don't start businesses to stare at spreadsheets and, and financials and, and invoice people. Um, and so that it comes, that comes in with every type of system. So that's what I really love to teach people is how systems and processes can give you hours back in your day and, give your customers and clients a really amazing experience of your brand. And okay. So a question real quick, what does it mean to be a digital entrepreneur? Oh yeah. So there's kind of two branches. One is someone who runs their business entirely online um, where, you know, they never really interact face to face with their customers. Um, Whether you are a service provider or a product maker, um, an entirely online business. The other branch of it is if you have a brick and mortar business and you have an online element. Um, so does that digital experience of your brand, does it match up with what people experience in the store? You know, a lot of people work really hard on, on the brick and mortar side to have this great customer service experience in the store and then what's happening on the digital side. So I kind of work with people on both. Um, but I do mainly work with people who run entirely online businesses. I think what you do is fascinating and necessary in so many ways. So I have been recently obsessed with systems. It's like my new obsession. Um, and I've been reading a book called work the system by Sam Carpenter Mm -hmm. I've, um, read most of it. He's a, he talks a little too much for my liking personally, (laughs) but it's a really, really great book. book. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's if I read a book, I'm going to be a little talkative too, but, um, but it's a really good one. And I think, I think that it's something that creatives struggle with a ton and if they would learn to wrap their heads around systems better, the struggles are like cut exponentially um, from totally. just, yeah, from, from anything, from invoicing or packaging or, I don't know, selling and marketing. So the idea of taking, taking something that you do constantly, so let's say you have like a Facebook strategy that you just sort of like worked up for, for I don't know, however many years you've been doing it. How is it that you take um, something that a, a digital entrepreneur has just been doing and a system and building that into an actual system that will give back. What does that look like? Yeah. So I think about it like the, uh, the idea of making your bed in the morning. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, sometimes when you make your bed and then you're like, Oh, now I'm going to straighten up the things in my dresser. And then you know what? I'm going to pull the vacuum out and vacuum the rug. I've never or experienced just... that either. <laughs> <laughs> just when throwing that out there. This is why you, Val. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like that idea, you know, things start to, my mom always said your room looks like 90% cleaner if you just make your bed and shut your closet door. Um, I remember her saying that when I was a kid and that was like huge for me that you can start the process by doing one thing. So I, you know, I, I strongly encourage people to just look at one piece of your business, whether it is your invoicing process or something that you know really well. Um, for a lot of people, it's the client intake. What does it look like when somebody says, I want to work with you? Um, and, and just start to systemize, start to write down every single thing that happens in that process. That's building a system into your business. 
And when you realize you have that done, then you go, okay, what else can I write down? And you just kind of go from there because it can be really overwhelming. Okay. But then what happens once you write it down? Like, so Emily just did that with our podcast actually. Mm -hmm. So writing it down from start (laughs) to finish, what it's like to create a podcast episode, because the hope is for us that we can then either delegate or package it up and sell it and teach other people how to do a podcast from start to finish. Mm -hmm. So like, what do you recommend people do when they write it down? Are they analyzing what's happening? Are they finding inefficiencies? Yeah. So it's great to be able to share it with someone else. So whether it's within your mastermind group or a business BFF or, um, or someone like me who has the ability to look at the big picture and, and know some of those minute details that can really change. Um, and, and take a look at that list and say, what can be delegated? Even if you don't have anyone to delegate it to right now, like highlight it in a color or whatever you do. If like, I love to, I love digital systems and I love my notepads. So, um, so I like to write things down by hand and then kind of like circle or star next to things that could be delegated out. Um, and, and just knowing like, wow, I can really hand off probably 80% of this process. Um, and, and it just kind of gives you a little impetus for making that happen. Um, and then I'm a big fan of creating a template from it. So I know you, I know you guys have talked about using um, Evernote for your podcast planning. So you can build a checklist in Evernote and use it as a template. And every single time you do a podcast, you just go through that checklist and check it off because that's going to show you where the gaps are. So use the list once you've created it. And then you might realize, oh, I, I missed that step along the way as you go through and physically check it off. It feels a little bit silly, especially when you're a solopreneur to like, check off a list that you made of your own tasks, but it actually reveals a lot to you about what's missing in your process and what you can improve and where you can streamline even more. Oh, I like the idea of making it into a checklist. So, so just to like illustrate yesterday I did, I sat down yesterday and did, I think it was like 10 files or something that was like step-by-step process of how it is that we go from like from episode agenda, which Kathleen does of like outlining what an episode is to like marketing. So it's been edited, show notes have been created. They've been loaded in. The podcast has been loading up. We've created the social sharing images and it's essentially done at that point. So this huge, like it took me hours. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. then I handed off the pieces that I don't do, um, to those who do do them and told them to complete them. And what I was able to do, so there have been a couple of things that have been floating around in my head, like whenever we load the show into BuzzFeed, no, yep. Buzzsprout, <laughs> which <laughs> is what sends it to iTunes, you know, adding a link in there to send it or to send people to lovebeingboss.com for show notes. Easy things like that that I've been thinking need to be done, but I just haven't done them because I'm like so set in the system that I've been doing. So I was able to go through the system that we've been doing anyway and make it better. Um, yep. like erasing sections that weren't necessary anymore or updating sections that would simply make it better. And I never probably would have done that if I hadn't written it out. And so I was able to streamline it and improve it by taking a couple of hours to write out a system that we do twice a week <laughs> anyway. Um, so I think writing down systems is huge. And on top of that, Um, Some of the later part of the systems that we never actually systemize, it's just been things that I've been doing that we've built along the way, like like writing and scheduling the newsletter, things like that, that go out on Tuesday whenever we launch our podcast. I was able to go through that. And once the system is created... Those can now go off to Chris, who is, who's my assistant and like does a large part of that now. And now she can do even, even more of it because we have a system outlined, which frees up our time to do other things. <laughs> That's right. And getting your team involved in the system creation is huge too. And so I guarantee you there are people listening right now and I, I know creatives, um, and I'll tell you why about that in just a second, as soon as I finish this thought, but um, I know that people are going hours, Emily, ugh, 
that sounds awful. <laughs> um, and Kathleen's face kind of says that right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. No. So Emily sends me um, the system and I'm like, I don't even know how to like edit this file. <laughs> right. And, and so, so my, I always tell people, look, if you don't want to write it down, like if that just seems totally overwhelming and maybe the whole podcast process, w- this wouldn't work for, but something like sending your newsletter, just next time you're doing it, hit record on QuickTime what, on a screen capture video while you do it, and then give that to someone else and say, make the checklist from this video. Oh and so you God, talk out genius. loud exactly what you're doing while you do it, which feels really like meta and weird, but give it over to someone, ask them to make the checklist. And then you see one, what you're, what you're missing in your checklist. And two, you also learn about how you communicate and like how you are able to teach someone, um, what you do. And then you have a checklist and a video (laughs) at the end of it and you can give it to anyone. Oh man. That is golden. Well, Emily, I had you do that for me whenever you combined our, whenever you overhauled my website, Mm -hmm. things like the e-course, but especially uploading a blog post. So our designer, Kristen, had been doing our blog posts. Like I would write them in Google Docs. She would then take them and upload them into the system. Well, Emily had created a video showing how to upload that into the system. Well, Kristen got a job elsewhere And all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, I don't remember how to do a blog post. I was just able to go to the video. And then I was also after that able to hand off the video to our new assistant who um, is Caitlin. And so now she uploads our blog post and Emily just had to do the video once. And I wasn't having to check back in with Emily and say, hey, Emily, can you teach my assistant how to do this? It was done. Yeah, yeah, web processes are huge for this. So that's actually something we do for a lot of our clients. I actually got an email from a client this morning. We recently did an update for her. And she was like, can I get a system for how it is that like I can do this now? And I just sent it over to Corey. Like, one, do a video for her. And two, write it down for our system so that if she ever loses it, or if we ever have another client who needs to be able to do the same thing, we have all of this stuff already like pre-done. And I also want to say like from the client side or from like the website user side of this, um, ask your web designer and or developer for things like this. This is it's not an abnormal thing to like ask those people for, and they do help you a ton because then you have a step-by-step process for adding products or adding a blog post or updating your homepage slideshow that you can use over and over again. And, uh, or you can hand it off to someone else because I know that's something that my clients are always like so pleasantly surprised that we do, but like it's standard, like (laughs) ask for systems that will make your life easier. Yeah. And videos are the easiest way to get out of your head what you do, um, especially on that day-to-day stuff. So whether it is scheduling your blog or newsletter, um, loading all your social media into Buffer or Hootsuite or whatever you're using, um, those things that you know, eventually I don't want to be doing this anymore. Even if it's probably, you know, a few months down the line, go ahead and make that recording of how it all happens. And, um, and, and then be able to have somebody watch the video and create the checklist for you. And if you don't have someone who can do that already, there are great groups full of, um, virtual assistants. I'd say a virtual assistant is probably the best person to look for, for that because they're very detail oriented people to begin with. Um, and I know that there are some in the being boss group, so you can start there. Um, I love groups like, like the being boss Facebook group because it's full of all kinds of people who can kind of help each other. There was actually a conversation, I think it was yesterday, um, about recording videos for clients. It was a designer asking about that. And, um, and if you are not a graphic designer and, and like really feel good about video and you're wondering, how do I even do that? Um, I'll share with you guys, I have a blog post with some of my top recommendations for video. Um, and I have them at like different price points and for PC and Mac. Oh, nice. Oh, good. Yeah. I use ScreenFlow. That's what, yep. that's what we use in the studio and I love it. Like we've used it. I've had it for years and I know for Mac, that's, that's one that I use. I think it was like a hundred bucks or something for. It is. Yeah. And there's yeah. a bit of a learning curve to it, but it's pretty decent to figure out. Um, yeah. this most simple is QuickTime comes yeah. for free on your Mac. 
And if you don't plan on doing any editing to the video, if you just want to make like a straight shot video, QuickTime's the way to go. I want to pause and take a second to chat about our sponsor, FreshBooks. If you are your own boss, FreshBooks is going to help you level up your game and make you feel totally legit. How? Professionals get paid and FreshBooks makes getting paid easy. I mean, it's practically automatic. First off, your invoice looks professional. You can customize it with your own logo, put in your payment terms and client info, and FreshBooks shoots out a legit invoice that you can either email or snail mail to your client. From there, you can see client payment history, you can send out late notice reminders, and your clients can pay you online. It's so fast and easy, and again, it makes you look legit. Stay on top of your business all year long with a clear picture of its financial health with FreshBooks. Try FreshBooks for free today. Go to freshbooks.com slash being boss and enter being boss in the how did you hear about us section. All right, back to our show. All right, Val, I have a question. Of all of the clients that you're working with, what are some like really top line common things that people need to have systems around? Yeah. Um, project management. All right. Let's talk about that. Let's dig in. Let's dig into project management. What does that mean? Oh, right. So project management is, um, taking a look at all of the things you're working on. So, um, so all of the clients that you have, all of your internal projects too. So whether you're designing a new ebook or creating a course with somebody, um, all of those things fall into the list of projects and then each individual client project. Um, and I would even include like, if you're doing any, um, writing for guest posts on other people's blogs, like that's a project of itself, right? So anything that takes up time in your business is a project. Um, and a lot of those projects live in our brains and, um, and they're the things that like swim over your head at night while you're trying to go to sleep. Um, and you can't because you don't want to forget that one thing that you have to do. So by implementing a project management system or tool into your business, you get all those things out of your head and down onto digital paper so that, um, so that you can easily pass things off to other people. And even if you don't have anyone involved in your business yet, you just get it out of your head and you can start to organize and put some um, time frame around things and to get some perspective on, oh, I have 37 projects going on right now. And what does that mean for my business and my productivity? And how do I kind of start to shift some of that? And so what are some project management tools that you recommend? Yeah. My absolute favorite is Asana. Um, I think they actually call it Asana, but I'm a yogi. So, I call it Asana. <laughs> um, so it, uh, Asana is a free project management tool and it's so robust that I almost can't believe it's free. Um, they have a, it's asana.com and you can go and sign up for an account. Um, you can share projects with other people so you can have an entire workspace. You have like, in your case, just for an example, Kathleen, you would have the braid creative workspace. And inside of that, you'd have all your braid clients and all of your braid projects, um, like the ebook e-courses and things like that. And then you could have a different workspace just for the being boss podcast that you'd share then with Emily and the braid workspace you share with Tara and everybody else in the braid team. But Emily doesn't need to see all that because she's only in the being boss workspace right. and you can have like each podcast episode as a project. Um, and what's great about Asana is that it links to Google docs and Dropbox. So you can very easily add things into one place. So everything's all in one place. Um, and it also does, it links to harvest for time tracking. So if you are someone who needs to track your hours and you're not necessarily working on like retainer or some other kind of, um, terms, if you need to track your hours, you can do that inside of the project itself. So you don't have to have all these different windows open to work on something. Um, and you can also have conversations inside Asana. So it gets you out of your email inbox, which is, uh, like gold. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, yeah. 
I haven't tried that one. I think that may be one that I haven't tried. <laughs> Weirdly, Asana is great, <laughs> um, and it's there's tons of videos inside of Asana on like how to get started. Um, they do a great job of teaching how their product works. Um, my other favorite is Evernote, and I know y'all use that. Um, Evernote is fantastic for collaboration, and then just kind of for like I I use it mostly as like ideation. So. It's my digital version of the notebook that sits on my desk. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's where I keep all my, I use the Evernote web clipper in Chrome and I keep all my little clippings, like um, my newspaper clippings <laughs> in Evernote. Um, so if I find a link that I want to reference back to later on. So I use Evernote a lot for my internal organization and then Asana for my external when I need to interface with clients. So there's a ton of other project management tools um, that help systemize and streamline all the projects you have going on in your business. There's Basecamp is a really popular one for um, designers. Um, I think like Asana is very linear. So if you are a list maker and um, you like things kind of orderly and organized in that way, um, linear in a linear style, you're going to like Asana. If you are more visual and you're like a tack board um, kind of visual learner and thinker, you might like something like Basecamp a little bit better. Um, it's just kind of about taking a tour. I always tell people don't get caught up in shiny object syndrome of like what's new and what you haven't seen before. Just go into it, take a look at, I mean, don't spend more than five minutes looking at the website for it. And you'll instantly know, like, do I feel like this is something I want in my life on a daily basis? Cause a tool is only as good as the person using it. So you want to be sure that you're going to want to use it. Oh, I like that. Okay. So let's talk about, let's talk about the effects of like getting your project management, like under wraps. So say someone's having a hard time, like getting project management, like wrapped around their head or their head wrapped around it, I suppose. Um, but so, so what do you tell someone who's struggling with, with that? Like what will getting some good project management systems in place, how will that help their business? Sure. Um, so it gets you out of that kind of cycle. Uh, you f- feel like you're on the hamster wheel of your brain of all the things that need to happen. Um, it actually shows you when you get everything into some kind of system, you have all your projects listed out and all the to do's that go along with it. It actually shows you that you probably don't have as much. Hopefully you don't have as much as you think that you do. Cause sometimes your brain just goes on like, hyperdrive of, I got to do this and this and this and this and this. All the things. (laughs) All the things. (laughs) And if you just write it out, I mean, it's like, it's like when you go to the grocery store, I mean, you open your fridge and you're like, I have nothing. I have to go buy everything at the grocery store. And then you actually like take a second and you make a list of what's missing from your fridge or your pantry. And you go, okay, I really just need like eight things. And so you don't go to the grocery grocery store like without a list and buy, you know, $400 worth of groceries. (laughs) So it's the same idea for your projects in, in your business that you get it out of your head and you start to realize how things really line up for you. And then you can also see like, okay, well I have three different offerings in my business and all these projects, like, you know, nine of 10 of my projects are in this one type of offering. And then I have one on this other offering and no one is in this other last one. Right. So then you can realize like where your efforts need to be in your business. If you want to grow certain offerings, or maybe it's just like no one's taking you up on it and it just needs to come down off your website and you can focus on these other areas. So it helps you get some focus around the way you're going to grow your business just by knowing exactly what you need to do every day. Plus then you wake up in the morning and you go, okay, I have my projects. Like I don't have to sit in front of my computer for an hour figuring out how I'm going to get started and end up um, like in my just answering emails right away or scrolling through Facebook, wondering how I can get connect with people because I have all my projects laid out. Um, so for me as the mom of a busy 13 month old, with I have 24 hours in a week of daycare, so she goes to daycare, which is great, um, because I need I need that focused work time. It makes me a better mom. But I have 24 hours in a whole week of time where she's not here, and so 
I need to have that kind of focus of what am I going to work on next? What needs my attention right now? And what can wait until next week or next month? I think that's huge. I think the fact that moral of the story (laughs) is like systems help you deal with overwhelm, which is something that like, I know our listeners are always struggling with any as an entrepreneur general, creative or otherwise, or just human being living in 2015, overwhelm is an issue, a huge issue. And needing to find focus is what fixes overwhelm. And if systems allow you to do that, adopt systems. (laughs) They also allow you to do things like take a vacation. (laughs) Yes. Um, Which, you know, I know a lot of people who own their own business and they, they're like, yeah, I'm going on vacation, but I'll be checking my email, you know, a couple of times every day while I'm away and don't worry clients. I'll be checking in with you. While I'm on in Tulum. I'm like, you don't have to, if you have systems and processes in place to organize your days so that you are prepped for your vacation to have, like I said, those kind of like checklists laid out so that someone else can help you out while you're on vacation. And so that your clients understand like, this is a time that I'm not going to be around and here's what you can do instead. Yeah. That's huge. Taking vacations is important. I, I went to New York last week and it was, I think one of the first like more than just like a day off that I've been able to do in a long time, actually ever, I think, and still have my studio be fully functional. And so I was gone and I didn't have to answer email and I didn't have to, I I, I had to do the Brady course (laughs) (laughs) while I was gone. But but that was only because I never handed that system off and it was the, it was the last one. So I kind of had to do it for like old time's sake in a way, but, but I was able to completely leave a studio of like full of projects and do what I needed to do because I had systems in place that would allow my team to do the jobs for me or for themselves really. And I was able to take legit like five day vacation, which was Amazing. so nice. But you know so what was good. cool about your vacation, Emily, something that I actually kind of noticed and want to verbalize here is that I feel like a lot of creative entrepreneurs, whenever they're taking a vacation, it's like this thing, like it's a big deal. Like, okay, everyone it's like, we're 60 days out from my five day vacation in New York, <laughs> be prepared, you know? And then, okay, team, we're 30 days out. I'm going on vacation uh, from at least like as someone who works intimately with you, Emily, not only on this podcast, but on my own business, there was never any of that, which I feel like may have been the case even a couple of years ago, but you, it just seemed like you were up and gone in New York. And I, I forgot that you were even in New York until I saw on my Instagram. And it's not because you were necessarily replying to my emails because I was still emailing you because I, right. I didn't even realize, but it was just because, um, because your studio was up and running because you do have systems in place. Um, it, it didn't feel like this big production. Yeah. No, it wasn't. And it it also allows you to enjoy it so much more. Like I just went on vacation. I didn't have to prep anything. I just left Yeah, because systems were in place that allowed me to do it. And I mean, and well, in this big 40 day thing I'm about to do or traveling out West and doing what I'm doing. Um, actually one of the things that this, this studio will be doing while I'm gone is doing more systems. Like, so we have like communication systems at systems, drawn out and we have, um, like client intake and like a lot of that stuff done. Um, but what we're doing now is doing out systems for a lot of the, the grosser things like how to, um, how to set up like an email account for, you know, telling clients how to do that, but also doing that in house whenever we update computers, because that's always a hassle (laughs) is putting email accounts on a computer. Um, but also things like, um, Like how it is that we develop individual parts of a website or the steps of creating a new business catalyst website. And traffic today apparently is no joke. (laughs) Did you guys hear this? Is there a motorcycle Motorcycles and trucks. There's a guy (laughs) like mowing grass across the street now. It's going to be a busy one. Um, But no, systems are huge. And and it, it is what allows me to do the traveling that I have to do to be a healthy person. Um, and then for this big 40 day thing where we're going out West, like my studio will not stop 
by any means. There will be plenty of days where I have no access to Wi-Fi and I anticipate no issues because systems are in place that allow me to do it. It's not fun. Like writing systems is one of the least fun things I think I've ever done in my life. But it allows me to have so much more fun that I'll do it and won't care. <laughs> well, and, you know, Kathleen, you mentioned something about, like, you're still emailing her and, uh, and when she was in New York. And um, so let's talk a little bit about how s- setting up systems in your business actually, like, impacts your clients and customers um, yes. and people who work with you. Because ultimately, having systems in place trains people um, how to communicate with you. And I know you guys talked about on the communicate episode, like that is so crucial that you can train people how to respond. So the fact that Emily has systems in place, had you trained Kathleen to not like expect an immediate response from her, from an email. And it wasn't about whether she was in New York or not. Um, but it was just like, that's, Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to email her and she'll respond when she is ready to respond. Right. Or my team will, if it's mm-hmm. super imperative. So mm-hmm. yeah, there are systems in place for like, but let's be I'm, real. Like I'm not saving lives for a living. So like nothing is really oh, that. Right, I mean, right. like, well, so the e-course yeah. is a big deal, but again, like no one's going to die if they don't have immediate access to the e-course. Right. But, 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 but also, so the e-course, like launching the, the last like braid, like individual e-course before we relaunch the new one. Um, it was so systemized that literally like, <laughs> so, and I'll even like get real, real. We went out the night that I was supposed to be prepping the e-course, <laughs> but I knew that it was so systemized and I knew what I was supposed to do. You're like, I can do be- this hungover. I woke up the next morning at six o'clock, had it done in 45 minutes and it was good to go. And there was no problems. So like just the fact that something like that was so systemized that I could really enjoy my time and get it done so quickly and so efficiently um, and with no issues. And granted, this is a system that's been perfected over two years. Like I have done it every month for two years. Um, But having those systems in place really does allow it to work off well or go off well, but also no students knew that it had been prepped, you know, 45 minutes before they got the email. Um, they all got access perfectly. So having that really hardcore system in place not only made my life better, but made your student experience go off without a hitch. And from like an internal and external facing system, which I want to talk with you, Val, a little bit more about client facing systems. But it is interesting because I'm kind of in charge of the client facing system for the e-course, which is the emails that go out after someone mm-hmm. signs up for the e-course. And even working with Emily and seeing, okay, what happens internally and how can I start to communicate that to the people who sign up for the e-course externally so that they know what to expect so that they're never left guessing. Um, so that's kind of been a really cool thing is, is taking something that feels very internal and sharing it with the outside world in a way that feels, you know, appropriate. They don't need to, they don't need to know the nitty gritty of how it works or when it works. It just needs to work for them. But letting them know what to expect has been huge. Um, yeah, in us, expectations. Like, yeah, exactly. So, okay. I want to talk a little bit, um, about client facing systems. Yeah. So go <laughs> ready, go. Um, so I have this exercise I do with my clients and it's the, and then what exercise? So I, a lot of people like ultimately at the end of the day, if you don't write down all your systems and processes, you can still be in business, but if you don't have clients, you can't still, it's a hobby. It's not a business, right? You're not being boss if you don't have clients. And so by creating really happy clients, you are building out a referral system. You don't have to spend money on marketing because people are sending people to you and people are raving about you on social media channels and, um, and finding ways to hire you again because they really enjoyed working with you. And part of that is systemizing your client experience. So, even if none of that internal talk, like all the stuff we talked about, about, you know, writing down your own systems, if none of that rang true to you as a listener, then I'd say take a peek at your external client facing systems and where, um, where that really impacts your bottom line. 
Um, so the exercise I do with my clients of the, and then what exercise is everybody comes to me and says, um, so I want to talk about like my, the way people are experience the client intake process in my business. I want to get, make that better. Okay. So let's start with before they're ever even a client. Um, they come to your website and you guys might actually do this too as, as designers. So they come to your website and they, and then what? And typically it's, and then they read through my blogs and eventually they sign up on my list or they look at my work with me page or whatever. So we get them on our, our email list. And then what? Um, and then they start getting my emails. Okay. So that's where we start is setting up the system of what, setting those expectations. What are they seeing as soon as they sign up? What's the thank you page look like on that sign up for the emails? Um, what is, you know, what's that first email telling them? Um, how are they being kind of brought into your community? And then that same experience extends into once they're a client, somebody hires you. Um, okay. So they said they want to hire me. We have a little quick call and make sure we're a good fit. And then, um, and then I send them the PayPal invoice and, and then what? Um, and then I usually send them an email with like a bunch of different times that we can have our first call and we go back and forth and email five or six times and pick the time for our first call. And then I send them all the documents that they need to get started and they have to print off the contract and sign it and send it back to me and like scan it and send it back. And so, right, like just right there there are three or four systems you can put in place to just make that process so much easier because you want to make it an easy yes. And when you start putting in things like now I have to print and scan a contract and my printer is out of ink because I haven't bought ink in since God knows when. And, um, or for people who still want you to fax it, (laughs) the best, the worst, (laughs) or write you a check because you don't take digital payments. Mm -hmm. Um, because you don't have fresh books set up for that. (laughs) Uh, right. So, you know, all those things make it harder for people to say yes. And if they haven't yet paid or signed a contract, then it's very easy for them to say, you know what? Never mind. Um, so you want to make it really easy and setting up systems can do that. So just in that little bit of example, you know, by, um, by sending, having that first call and, um, scheduling time with them and using a scheduling tool, um, my favorite is acuity scheduling, but you have, you're able to send them a link to say, go ahead and book some time with me. And you create an appointment type. That's the kickoff call. And it's an hour or whatever you spend with people and they can go in and pick a time and it lines up with your Google calendar or whatever calendar you use. Um, and as long as it's not paper, whatever digital calendar you use (laughs) and, uh, and they just pick a time that works for them. Um, and say, you know, you send them this link that says, go ahead and pick your time. And for our kickoff call, here's your, I'm going to send you your invoice by FreshBooks and you can make that payment online. And then I'm also sending you a contract and it's an e-contract through EchoSign. And you guys have talked about that before. It's called Document Cloud now. Oh, Um, that's its new name. We can never remember what the new name is. Document Cloud. (laughs) Um, Adobe has come a long way with that baby right there. Um, cause it used to be really clunky and I used to hate recommending it. Um, but the other one that I know a lot of designers like is hello sign. Um, so creatives really like hello sign. It's a beautiful user experience and y'all like beautiful things. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, you know, just sending your contracts with a digital e-sign, all you have to do is click and sign it. Um, and it'll send a copy to both of us. And we'll get started. Um, and then you kind of look through there. And that's exactly the process I do with people in um, in a little program I have called the Perfect Process. I love that. I think it's so huge. I think it's so huge what you did where, like, you make someone speak about like, and talk about it. Like, talk about what their process is. And then you break it down and make it simpler. Because that's that's really all it is. It's It's getting it out because it's all in our head. Like... All the things are just in our head, getting it out on paper, 
Um, and then going bit by bit and finding how you can make it more efficient and more pleasant for that customer experience. I think that's, it's, it's massively huge. It's not really, it's thank you. And it's not about making people wrong. Like I, I never want to make people feel wrong in the way that they're doing things. And so I just want everyone to know, like, if you are asking people to fax contracts, it's fine. And let's figure out how it can be even better. Um, cause maybe fax becomes like an option. You have, we work with people who use fax machines and they want to fax great. And you have a digital signing option. Um, so, you know, it's not about making people wrong because you don't know what you don't know. And, um, exactly. And that's where right? I think Val, you've been so amazing in our Facebook group as far as just sharing your gifts of knowledge, because you'll identify opportunities where people are saying like, I don't know what to do here. And they're describing the problem. And you're like, there has already been a tool or a resource or an app that addresses that issue. So, um, I feel like you might be a little bit of an app or resource guru. So I'm curious, are there any other like apps or resources that you can recommend that maybe even you have on your phone that you just love? Yes. <laughs> um, people always ask me, can you give me your top app or yes, that's what we want. Know, we want your top number app one. list. That's like picking your favorite child. Yeah. All of us <laughs> only have one child, so we can just say our, that's it. Um, but no, it truly is because it depends. And I'll say that Zapier and if this, then that, those two go together. They're, they're my twin children. They, um, <laughs> that's my absolute favorite. Because what they do is connect things that aren't inherently connected. So my current running favorite, if this, then that, is a a recipe that, um, so if I favorite something on Twitter, so if I give it a little star, then if this, then that takes that tweet and puts it into a Google Docs spreadsheet so I can reuse it. So now when I retweet something, I make sure I favorite it because every time I retweet something, I think I want to be able to use that again, but then it just gets lost in the mess that is Twitter. And so I use if this and that to like wrap my brain around Twitter a little bit and be able to grab those things that I retweeted two days ago and plug them into, I use Edgar for my social media, but plug them into my social media again and instead of retweeting it over and over using it as native content then. Um, so I can continue to share other people's cool things, but I don't have to think about going back in that. Oh, when I retweeted Emily's thing like four days ago and dig spending all this time to dig through, if this, then that does the work for me. And then I just go grab the link and plug it in. Oh, that's genius. I love if, the, if this, then that. I don't use it yeah. for that, but now I will. Chris, I know you're listening to this. Implement immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a pollen alert on my phone for if this, then that, because I have crazy allergies and so does my little girl. And so I get a little alert on my phone if pollen's going to be high on a particular day. Then what? You just don't go out? I just, yeah. <laughs> I just know to not go for a walk because... Um, I, we walk a lot. Um, that's actually how I listen to most of being boss is on walks with the dog and the baby. Oh, and, uh, so I just know that we're going to have an inside play day on those high pollen days. And it also helps me know, like, if I'm feeling really heady and tired, it's not about anything that I did or didn't do. Like I, I don't need to make another cup of coffee. It's just a high pollen day. <laughs> so it helps me. It gives me some like peace of mind and, And helps me understand why things happen. I want to do like, if Mercury is in retrograde, then... (laughs) Which is always. Don't buy a house or don't (laughs) sign any contracts or, you know, whatever it is. I was going to say, if if Mercury's in retrograde, just put my autoresponder up as like, I'm unavailable. There might be. Is there a website for like, if this, then that ideas? Because yeah, they have recipes on there. So you can kind of browse around. Like there's all kinds of, if you're a crazy sports fan and it's like baseball season and you want to keep up with that, there's baseball recipes in there. Oh, that's cool. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So they're right. My favorite way to use it is if, if I Instagram something and then hashtag it, Twitter 
then it will feed my Instagram image to my Twitter feed Mm -hmm. so that I like, so it actually feeds in as an image instead of a link. And I can dictate which ones go to Twitter a lot easier. That's one way that I use it. That's what our assistant does that for Braid's social media. Oh yeah. It's huge. And for easy things like that. And Zapier is really cool because it will do things, very similar things, but um, if this and that is a little more like app focused, Mm -hmm. and then Zapier is a little more like systems and tools focused. So I have a Zapier set up that when somebody books a particular appointment with me in Acuity, so in my scheduling tool, they book a particular appointment and, um, and then it, Zapier tells Asana to get a project set up for that client. So it takes a template that I have in Asana and it makes a new client project. Shut up. Val, you are living in the future. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to like, I'm going to have, I really want to do this to my house. I want to have that, that kind of house where you like walk in a room and the lights turn on oh, or like that in the studio. Um, it's magic. Yeah. Magic. That's what I want. I want to have, um, if I leave my garage door up, I get a notification on my phone you can do that, by the way. I just have to like buy the technology for it. But uh, yeah, there's um, there's like some Kathleen. You'll love this. There's um, there's a speaker system that you can get for your house where as you move from room to room, the music turns on or so off. So it's like soundtrack to your life, no matter where you're going. Basically, I amazing. would love that. I have the tiger every day. And can you do it like auto, where like if you're going from like the kitchen into like your bedroom, instantly it's like mood music. It just playing. follows with you. Yeah. Or I was gonna say like it switches music. Oh, it changes. So it's music. like it changes from like like too. nice cooking music to like sexy times music. Yes, <laughs> that so, would be so amazing. I, I love there, what you're talking. That will happen. Yeah. I love what you're talking about, though, with automation and how that makes your life so much easier. And four-hour work week is, like, it's a very controversial thing, more sure. or less. But but one of the things that he, like, preaches is automation and how it really does make your life easier. And you don't have to automate, like, you know, your one-on-one time with clients like that you know, or anything that would be controversial. But you can automate all the other things, with systems that just go off without a hitch every single time that will make your life easier. I think that's huge. We, um, we use the home automation stuff in the studio a bit. And my very favorite one, because it doesn't have to be hard is in the bathroom. (laughs) When you walk into our bathroom, we have a motion sensor at the top because the light switch is behind the door and you can't get it. Our light just comes on. And when you walk out, it will go off. And it's like those sorts of things are the things that you don't think about, but, yeah, make but if you're your sitting really easier. still on the toilet for a long time, it will it go off. Turn off. <laughs> yeah. It, you have to wave your hands around. <laughs> you gotta be quick in that bathroom. Yep. You do. There's no dilly dallying. <laughs> well, what bathroom. that system might bring to light then is if you're on the bath, if you're on the toilet for a <laughs> long time, we got some right? issues. Then you've got some other about. issues you need to address. Right. right. Well, it, it also keeps Corey and Chris under and David too, <laughs> under wraps too. Like they can't go hide in the bathroom because the light's right. going to go off. Right. And that's inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Val, how can people find more um, about systemizing and automating and just getting all of these tools in place from you? Totally. Um, I have a shiny new website at valgeisler.com. And so and I actually have a little gift for all the bosses listening. So Emily, you talked earlier about um, how overwhelm is, it's huge. And it's just, it's like a part of our life right now. Um, especially with social media and everything going on. And as an entrepreneur, overwhelm is very common. So I have a little gift that will help banish overwhelm. And you can find it at valgeisler.com backslash boss. Thank you. And we'll include that in our show notes as well. And um, you're really super active in the Facebook group. So if you guys have not joined our Facebook group yet, we will include a link to that in our show notes. And that's a really great place to probably connect with you as well there too. Yep. You can tag me up in the Facebook group. I do also have a little Facebook group called Simplified Systems. So if you want like more, more, more with this system stuff, if you're totally geeking out right now, um, you can come to, what is it? Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Simplified Systems. That's the, um, 
the little URL there, or you can just search Simplified Systems in Facebook and find us. Um, it's a great group because, you know, it's it's kind of like the Being Boss group where everyone just really supports each other. And so you find people who um, know a lot more about systems in different capacities because that's what they specialize in. So if you want to nerd out, um, then Simplified Systems is a great place to hang. Are you an aspiring creative who's having trouble gaining traction and building a life you truly love? Forget invoicing and blogging platforms. Your problems lie in building a morning routine, figuring out when you're most productive, and trying to define your ideal day. Well, I promise you something, all is not lost. Kathleen and I have created a four-week, 22-email bundle of our DIY coaching for creatives and get-your-shit-together email subscriptions for our Being Boss listeners who need to start getting their feet wet, or for seasoned bosses who need to get back to the roots of their creative life. Get your act together and begin building a boss life of your own. Find out more at lovebeingboss.com slash bundle. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you about something fun that we're doing coming up this fall. Emily and I decided that we wanted to go on vacation to New Orleans, one of our favorite cities in the world. And we thought, wouldn't it be fun if we invited you to come along? Go to beingboss.com slash NOLA and learn more about taking a vacation with us. We hope to see you there. Thank you for listening to Being Boss from Emily Thompson and Kathleen Shannon. Find show notes for this episode at lovebeingboss.com, listen to past episodes, and subscribe to new episodes on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. If you like our podcast, show us some love by reviewing Being Boss on iTunes and sharing it with a friend. Do the work, be boss, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, I guess I don't have to wave since we're not We're not YouTubing it anymore. (laughs) Forget that. You can still wave if you want, Kathleen.